exercise every day for 30 days. We'll look at the science behind shorter regular rides. Is it a good habit to get into? What do you need to do to get the most benefit, both physically and mentally? And is it good training? We're also going to tell you how me and Hank got on in the 30 and 32. Before we do though, can we start by saying we've been loving riding with you all during the month as well. In total, 13,000 of you have joined us on Swift. Together, we have logged 130,000 kilometres and climbed over a million metres. We've had quite the peloton too, with the average of 170 riders per ride, and sometimes even up to 700. Sadly though, only four joined Sai's ride on his Wout Van Aert killer session. Well, I've tried to kick off 2023 with a bang. It has to be said, I've really struggled over the last recent months with my training. I've had no big epic ride with Mark Beaumont to train for. So this 30 and 30, well, gave me a kick up the arse to get out and do some exercise. I also placed a bin outside my back door to give me a cold water dip. It's so cold. Get me that extra motivation. And I've set myself the challenge on seeing every single sunrise. Well, most of them, anyway. Has it had an effect on my fitness? To find out, I'm doing a test on Zwift. I'm gonna ride up the epic KOM as fast as possible, see if my fitness has changed. All right, here goes nothing. Having a goal of just 30 minutes has allowed me to get up, Take the box, and I've always kind of got beyond it because once I'm set up, I'm on the bike, and I'm going, I kind of stay on for another half hour. So some days I've done an hour, but it's you know a hell of a lot longer than I did in December. It's felt good, and I felt like the fitness is coming quickly without having to do too much riding. The key is to stick to it. It's not just cycling, I also like to go out for a quick run. Now I've been doing my cold water dips, trying to get up earlier. That way, my energy levels stay constant throughout. I feel like I'm more productive. Productive, shall I say. much exercise do you need? Fairly big question that, isn't it? The World Health Organization recommends 150 to 300 minutes of moderate activity per week, which, quick maths, could be even more than 30 minutes a day. Apparently though, that 150 minute mark is the average amount of time where the majority of people will see benefits in everything from cholesterol levels to body fat percentage, sleep quality, mental health, and even holding back the aging process. Oh yes, that's a relief. Now a big study was conducted by a team here in the UK and looked into methods of commuting to work. Out of 263,000 people, they found that those who cycled to work as opposed to driving, so getting regular exercise, had 21% reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, were 11% less likely to have had a first cancer diagnosis, and were estimated to have a 12% reduced risk of premature death compared to those who opted for a car or a bus. And that's including the slight increase in risk from simply riding a bike outside. So you could theoretically extend your life by three to four years. It's important to note that exercise doesn't have to be every day though. So you now get to take a day off, which is a relief. Plus, it's not necessarily about duration either because exercising for less time, but at a higher intensity has similar benefits. So moderate exercise for a few hours a week is really, really good for your health. But what about improving your fitness? What do you need to do then? I'll be back shortly. I'm trying to stick on 350 watts. 
Haven't seen those kind of numbers in minimum five months. Now it has to be said, I'm motivated by my fitness. So doing something like this, has basically just got me off my ass. Get up that bit earlier and put out some hours, no matter how short. Maybe it'll help, I guess, in the hunt for better fitness. 2023 is going to be a new me. Watch out, GCN. Hangs back for more. 400 watts. What? Second silver medal. I'll take that in January. Right, whilst Hank is burying himself on the indoor trainer, I thought I'd come and grab a coffee and tell you about how my month has been. And very similar to Hank, the end of last year was probably the least riding I've ever done in my cycling career. And I knew I wanted that to change. So when this 30 minutes of exercise for 30 days came along, I thought, yes, that is the perfect challenge for me. It's manageable because sometimes when you think about getting back into a routine or wanting to exercise more, it can be quite overwhelming. But the 30 minutes, you know, that's doable and manageable for me. So that was a great starting point. And on the 1st of January, I joined Killian for the very first Swift ride of the year, did that. And then every single day since then, I have pretty much done exercise. It's either been on Zwift or I've swapped it for a hike or a gym session. Another great thing I found about the GCN club rides is if I said I was joining a ride or if I was leading a ride, I had to turn up. I couldn't just bail last minute and sit on the sofa. I was turning up and I was getting it done. And I also loved the community aspect, being to ride along with so many other people that share the love for cycling and just be able to chat. And it didn't feel like a chore that sometimes it might have done in the past. And for some people, 30 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but it was a great starting point for me. And what I kept telling myself was, 30 minutes is better than nothing. It's better than just sitting on the sofa. And some days I choose to do workouts. Some days it was just the community rides or whatever I fancied really. I didn't put any pressure on myself to know, do this power. It was just about getting the ball rolling. And once I got past the second Friday of January, which was quitters day, I knew it was game on. So we've talked about exercise for health benefits, but what do you need to improve fitness? The short answers are, we don't know. And it depends. For just about everyone to get a training response, i.e. improve fitness, you need a training stimulus, i.e. do some exercise. What that is will depend on how fit you are in the first place. So a pro cyclist will probably need to do 15 hours a week minimum to get a training stimulus. Whereas right now, 15 hours a week would probably kill me. The less fit you are then, the less training you need to do. And it makes sense, the fitter you are, the less demanding exercise will be, so the more you need to do of it to stimulate your body to adapt and improve. What gets interesting though, is considering what types of training provide the best stimulus. And in this case, the answer also is, we don't know. Partly because it's so hard to prove. Our old friend, the late Professor Louis Passfield, conducted a fascinating piece of research which tested the training response of two groups of cyclists. One group did three hours a week of high intensity interval training. One group did 16 hours a week of sweet spot. And the results, indistinguishable. Both groups improved the same amount and in the same ways. Plus they even looked at endurance type metrics. So considering this, you'd think that you wouldn't need all that much training if it's hard enough. And as you lower the exercise intensity, you need to do disproportionately more in order to achieve a training stimulus. Only it doesn't actually work like that. Not really anyway. Surprisingly, the Wow Van Art VO2 Max session it's really hard. I tell you, it's so good doing a workout with other people. You can't get dropped, so you don't feel bad. But you still want to finish each rep to your maximum. 
because everyone else is around you and you can see they're doing it too. Okay, there we go. Two more to go. Well, we're not. Done the VO2 max session. Come and have a go. I think you're hard enough. Yes. 10 out of 10. Nice. Quick recap then, training hard for short periods of time can be just as beneficial as longer hours in the saddle. However, it's worth bearing in mind that scientific experiments like the one previously mentioned are done over relatively short periods of time, like four weeks. Whereas we want our fitness to be sustainable for the long term, right? So if you did three hours a week of high intensity interval training, you would improve. But if you do it every week, you will stop improving. The consensus is that HIIT training creates short-term gains through peripheral physiological adaptations, whereas longer, slower training creates more significant long-term central changes. So perhaps the best idea for long-term sustainable training moving forwards now is to mix it up. So some high intensity intervals for sure, but some longer, low intensity workouts as well. There are short-term shortcuts but for long-term meaningful fitness gains, then trying to find a little bit of time for longer rides is really important. So now you've graduated from the 30 and 30, the good news is that you don't need to do it every day. The bad news is that 30 minutes won't always be enough. And how will you know? Keep an eye on your numbers. Wear a heart rate monitor so you can see how your body is responding, and then try and mix up your training to keep those stimuli coming. Keep the stimuli coming. Write that down. Ready. Oh, sorry, that looked. Oh, don't touch. That's grim. Sorry. Ew. That yeah. looked hard. It was hard. It was really hard. Betty, yeah. see how everyone enjoyed me. That was mega. I hope you're uh, still in one piece. After that, go on, Hank. What, how much have you improved? I'm actually super going? happy because, you know, I wasn't feeling my greatest coming into December. And January, I've really kind of you know, using 30 30, upped it that little bit more. And I've added 20 watts onto my FTP, which I'm happy about. I'm not where I want to be, but it started the process and hopefully I'll be a better fitter me in 2023. Curious enough, you got the ball rolling. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. about you, Manon? Well, I've just really enjoyed riding with everybody on the GCN community on Zwift. I think it's been great just having someone to ride with. It just motivates you seeing everybody around you riding. So let us know down in that comment section if you've enjoyed riding with us. You did do a lot more chatting than Ollie. It has to be said. Did I not chat much? He's oh. focused, didn't he? <laughs> Let us know how you got on with the 30 and 30. And crucially, what are you going to do in February? Mm. Yeah, let us know in the comment section. And give the video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, we hope you have. We'll see you in the next video.